Behind me across the street is the number 10 saloon. And this is where Wild Bill Hickok was shot to death in a poker game. And behind me, you're going to have the best view of the mountain. You don't know, I'm sure that tour bus that had been through there before. Because what if they got stuck? I mean, what would they do? It's not like they could push it. <laughs> Auntie, you're scary. <laughs> Well, we made it to Deadwood. Are you recording? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we made it to it Deadwood. Is. Yeah. Okay. Just well, we made it to Deadwood, South there. Dakota. And we're going to explore the what, city? City. City, I guess. Okay, so we'll take you along. Yep. think of Deadwood? It's pretty interesting. Like I said, it reminds you a little, well, a very little bit of Nashville with all the restaurants and bars or saloons, whatever they want to call them. Right. And a little bit of Tombstone because they do have the outdoor shows. Yeah. So, yep. uh, yeah. Behind me across the street is the number 10 saloon. And this is where Wild Bill Hickok was shot to death in a poker game. He made the mistake of not sitting with his back to the wall. And he instead had his back to the door and uh, Jack McCall walked in and shot him dead. So this we read some of you folks as official Deadwood deputies. So we need all the kids to join me right out here in the middle of the street. Say that again. 
That's a rare thing in this game. David, it's just an expression. What do you want? You know what? We got a wiggle old meathead here to keep home where it gets dark. Nah, I'll leave him alone. Besides, his old meal lives away home without his help. Yeah, so. I'll leave him now. Well, God bless the Union. To the Union. To the Union. Oh, that is terrible. The Deadwood. The Deadwood. Rushmore, dear. Yep, and we're going to visit the monument today and take a look around the park. Yeah, you think uh, George and um, Teddy and uh, Abe and uh, who's the other one? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson are expecting us? Could be. Could be. Well, we're definitely say hi for all of you folks out there on, when we get there, so let's get going. Okay. Today we're visiting Mount Rushmore. We've never been here before, so uh, yeah, it's our first visit, so we're looking forward to it. We decided to do the self-guided tours, so they um, only cost six dollars, and they give you this little like phone device, and uh, yeah, they also give you a guide. There are. 29 stops along the tour and uh, yeah. As you walk towards Mount Rushmore you're going down a corridor where you have all the state flags and you can see the different states representatives of the United States which is kind of cool. Here's our home state New York. When you enter to Mount Rushmore, you're going to walk down through the Avenue of Flags, and it's going to take you to the Grand Viewing area. And behind me, you're going to have the best view of the mountain and the president. When visiting Mount Rushmore, be sure to stop into the visitor center. It's under the uh, main viewing area, 
and they have a couple of movies there that you can watch. They have a, they also have an exposition area that you can walk through that kind of gives you more of the story with um, newspaper articles and different things telling the struggles to get this built and what had to be done by the workers to make it happen. Pretty interesting. We, right here, right? Yeah. So we're taking the President's Trail and this is, takes us up, gives us some different views of the uh, monument. So I'm going to take you guys along. There's supposed to be some stairs on this, so if you have difficulty managing stairs, it's not recommended. And there's some elevation changes too that aren't done with stairs. But one of the benefits is you did get to go by the sculptor's studio, and so you can get to see where um, Gustav Borgman um, had his design sculpture that they use as reference points to make the monument. If we walk through this tunnel here, we're going to get a very unique view of Washington and Lincoln. It's hard to see Lincoln because of the pine tree, but you got a real... There's, Wash whoop, there's Washington, and Lincoln would be right over here behind the pine tree. In this shot you can see the more than a half a million tons of granite that was blasted off the mountain to form the memorial that is Mount Rushmore. This shot over here, trying to look at this, it's the viewing area. The building behind me is the composer's studio. And this is where the models were kept that they use for reference to carve the monument. Um, they used a system where they had a, a pole across the top and a string coming down, and the models here are 1 12th the size of the actual monument. So they would take measurements from that using the, the pole as a reference point, and then they would go from the center point of that pole out to where they drop down, and then that distance down, they would multiply those measurements by 12 and that's how they determined where to cut on the mountain. So what are your thoughts on uh, Mount Rushmore? Oh, you definitely have to come to see it in person. Anything, any pictures, any TV shows doesn't do it justice. So, you know, if you, it would be a great trip both for parents, children, whoever, right. it's definitely worth a visit. Right, and this is, I mean, you want to take the presidential trail because there's a lot of information there, especially if you've got these things, the sticks, um, to tell you what's going on. But there's also a, a lot of great views, and as you, where, where are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> and as you walk along, um, you, you get to hear some of the history and, and about, you know, the behind the scenes story. Now, we're not actually done with this. We're actually, we're leaving for now, but we're going to come back because there's an evening show that we want to catch. And so, that's at 9 o'clock every evening. Yeah, well, it depends on what time sunset is, I think. Right, okay. But at the evening show at this time of year is at 9 o'clock. So check when you come in here or check online to see when that show is. Um, we're going to come back. I don't know if we're going to be tonight or a different night because it does look like it might rain this afternoon. So we may come back a different night and check that show before we leave. But now, on to the gift shop. Because right. you always exit through the gift shop. The all-important stop. Right. Okay. Pro tip, if you're coming here, come in the afternoon, later in the afternoon actually. The park is open until um, 10 o'clock at night, at least during the summer. And the crowds thin way out, say, 2 o'clock. So if you came in at 2 o'clock or 5 o'clock, you, you know, if you came in at 5 o'clock, you could tour the park and then catch the nightly show in the same day. Or you could uh, come in earlier and just leave and then come back, like we're going to do. But if you get here around noontime or morning, it's when everybody's here and the crowds are pretty heavy. There is RV parking and oversized vehicle parking. 
our truck fell into the oversized vehicle parking, but there are some smaller RVs here. And then around the edge, there are trailer parking areas. So you could come in with your trailer in tow. Well, this concludes the closing ceremonies for Mount Rushmore. What'd you think? I thought it was very impressive. Yeah, they showed a nice film of uh, you know the about all the presidents who were on the wall, and then they had the uh, flag, made the lighting of the um, monument. monument, and then they had the uh, singing of the national anthem. Yep, and then they lowered the flag. Oh, and, and then they brought veterans. Actors active or retired military up on yeah. stage to be recognized and to lower the flag. Yeah, it was a very nice ceremony. Yes, it was. So if you uh, come here, definitely take the time to, you know, come back in the come, evening. Come to the evening program, yes. Yeah, yeah you're, you won't be disappointed. All right, that concludes our day. So let's go. Oh, one more thing. These four guys behind here, you know why you never want to play poker with them? Why? They have stone faces. All right, let's go. Okay. During our visit to the Black Hills of South Dakota, we decided to take a drive through Custard State Park. Encompassing 71,000 acres in the Black Hills, Custard State Park is home to abundant wildlife and adventures. Camping, hiking, biking, swimming, fishing, or just relaxing, there's something here to do for everybody. For us, it was a scenic drive through Custer State Park known as the Needles Highway. This drive is 14 miles long, but expect to take at least 60 minutes or more to do it. What's unique about this drive is that there's two tunnels, the first one known as the Needles Eye Tunnel, which is eight feet wide by nine feet, nine inches tall. The second tunnel is Iron Creek Tunnel, which is eight feet, nine inches wide by 10 feet, 10 inches tall. The Needles Highway is a spectacular drive through the Ponderosa Pines and the Black Hill Forest Meadows and surrounded by birch and aspen and rugged granite mountains. Oh, up here is the needle's eye, and we're going to go through the tunnel. Which is over there. Which is over there. Over there. Not in the they hired him from Tibet. 
Come You ever see those guys in Tibet driving on like a three foot wide road? Um, any of those places. You know, yeah, in the 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 oh my gosh. Oh, the best <laughs> yes! our trip through the Needles Tunnel and actually I mean it was close we had to pull our mirrors in but we were fine and that was it was nifty I mean that was really neat yeah and we did see a tour bus actually go through so everybody else I think figured if the tour bus can make it we can make it I don't know I'm sure that tour bus that had been through there before because what if they got stuck? I mean, what would they do? It's not like it could push it. So, yeah. He was an experienced driver. We're traveling through Custer State Park, and this is what's known as the Needles Highway. It's a scenic route and it's a very narrow road there's three tunnels we've gone through one already there's two more yet to go but the one we went through is the narrowest only eight feet wide uh, the other tunnels are down here they're a little bit wide they're like eight feet and a half so we get another extra six inches we can exhale a little bit as we go through Needles Highway is a spectacular drive through ponderosa pines and black hill spruce forests, meadows surrounded by birch and aspen, and rugged granite mountains. The road name comes from the needle-like granite formations which seem to pierce the horizon along the highway. The roadway was carefully planned by former South Dakota Governor Peter Norback, who marked the entire route on foot and horseback. Construction was completed in 1922. Although we didn't see any wildlife along this trip until the very end, stay tuned because we take another drive through Custard State Park where we will see the 
more money. We're gonna visit Crazy Horse, right here. Today we're visiting the Crazy Horse Monument. The uh, sculpture itself is still a being a, is still a work in progress. They do have the face of um, crazy, crazy horse. Crazy horse completed, and now they're working on his arm, and then the horse itself. And then they figure it's going to be another fifteen to twenty years before to, it will be completed. Right, and they've had to make some changes because of the type of stone that they run into. But uh, tell people about the whole place here. It's a pretty neat experience. Yeah, it's a neat experience. It, it's thirty dollars for a car with two people, and that entitles you to th three days. They do have an evening light show as well. Yeah, laser light show, which is, sounds like it might be pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And you can actually take a bus ride up to the mon or below the monument, and you'll get a nice um, talk by the bus driver. Yeah, that's five dollars per person, but it's well worth it. Right. And then you come back, there's a nice visitor center with a beautiful museum. They have a gift shop, they have a restaurant, a snack shop, and uh, it really is a nice grounds. Right, and there's a lot of Native American art around here that you can look at in the museum, and some of it's for sale in the gift shop. Mm -hmm. um, great views no matter where you are. Oh, the movie. Oh, there's a That's very nice movie about um, how the monument came to be the sculptor who designed the monument how he started working on it himself yeah and then he brought his wife in and then they end up having 10 children and they all they, they work and they're great and they continue to work with right it. and the grandchildren yeah and uh, yes so it, it is very well well worth the visit yeah and this is all um, privately funded. The Lakota um, Indians do not take any federal funds for this project or for anything else. And it's really interesting. You know, they, they're funding it by your attendance here and donations and such. And they do offer, um, like, a, if you do a donation of $125 or more per person, they'll actually take you right up to the face of, Cra of Crazy Horse and see that part of it. Um, a little expensive for us, but kind of yeah. neat to be kind of neat to do, I guess. Right. So yeah. So that's our visit for today. Yeah. So we would recommend that if you're in the South Dakota area visiting Mount Rushmore, take an extra day, come over here and see this. It's probably a half a day type of attraction. Right. You could probably do this and Mount Rushmore the same day. You could. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Monty, what is it? Buffalo, except you don't want to get close to them. Hey. No. Look, they weren't scaring them. So 
So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit that bell for notifications. And until the next time, we will see you down the road. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.